Hello there. Oh, I gotta turn this down. Alexa, lower your volume. There. Hopefully I won't get in trouble having the background music on. <laughs> Okay. Oh, we'll have some fun tonight making a few cups. Some gloves. Okay, so let me know when you're on. Oh, let's see, let's see. Hello. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for joining. <laughs> so um, when you join, let me know that you're on so I can see who it is. I was just getting. Can you see, Sarah, can you try to um, let me know if you can share to the group, please? Okay. Ooh, okay. I lost a couple. <laughs> Hello, let me know when you join so I can see who's there. Just getting my video shared. Okay. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Hey, Kim, how are you doing? Happy Tuesday night. Just wait for a couple people to join here. Did I lose somebody? Did I lose you, Kim? I think I have it, Sarah. Go into um, go into the resin um, my Tumblr's uh, resin art group and see if um, I shared it in there successfully, please. Okay, so I'm going to get a few powders on here. Okay, hi, Kim. <laughs> I don't know. The counter keeps going up and down, up and down. I'm not sure if people are leaving or coming. I'm just kind of getting things started here. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just brushing on, um, and I don't know if this makes a huge amount of difference, but I'm brushing on some of my um, mica powder just straight onto the cup. It's kind of something I did um, to one of my cups earlier and it really came out looking pretty cool. So I thought I'd repeat everything I did. And I'm using this white mica powder, but it has a, um, 
a hint of some yellow green in it. So it's kind of cool. It's like it turns a little bit. Hey, Michelle, welcome. I'm just kind of working out a few, something kind of different. Oh, that actually, that <laughs> this white actually has kind of a, a see that hue. It's kind of got a purpley green color to it. That's pretty cool. Okay, now I'm going to put on kind of a green. I'm just going to brush it on. Nothing's on the cup yet. It's just primed. It's a little different uh, thing that I was working on, and I had a couple of cups I did that really kind of came out i i think they kind of came out looking a little bit like a galaxy um but i d you probably remember the pictures i did one in kind of a pink and red and the other one ended up being in kind of a blue and um god they were really pretty with a little glitter to it so i'm going to show you how i did those <laughs> okay and there's a little glue Share out, feel free to share out the, um, my live uh, to friends, people you know, and if you can safely share it to a group, feel free, don't get in trouble. So many groups have different rules and what have you, so you want to abide by those. I'm a rebel, I didn't, got in trouble. <laughs> I don't know, truthfully, it's because there's so many groups with different rules, I just couldn't keep track. So it was an innocent mistake, but it got a people, people are upset. Okay. Now I'm going to share with you a new product I just got in. Um, it's called Nikki's Secret Softs and uh, it's from Whirlyville Designs. That's her label. And I just put it in a bottle. It comes in a bag. Whirlyville Designs. Um, I saw her using this on one of her lives and I have to tell you, I was in love. It, it's a, she's got this really pretty glitter mixed in with, Hey, Melissa, <laughs> um, this glitter is mixed in with a, um, glow powder. So it really is beautiful. And if you're doing, um, I would bet this would be gorgeous with, um, uh, Northern lights, your Northern lights cup. If you wanted a little glitter of the sky, you know, stars, that kind of thing. <clears throat> but um, this is a neat one to do on this cup. So what we're doing is what I've done rather is I've just taken mica powder and painted, you know, just streaked it across my uh, primed cup. There's nothing on it right now. Okay. And then, um, and then I also got a new, <laughs> I got a new powder in. Um, this is what they call blue, green, purple, super flash. It's a white chameleon pearls with large particles. Um, Oh my god! I'm telling you, this thing—it's it, white, but look at the look at the tints. I mean, it's it's like pearl. You can see yellow. I mean, it's a chameleon white. Ah. So I got it for a couple of reasons. One, I thought it'd be cool in this cup today, but primarily I got it to do a white dragon cup, the mother of pearls dragon, because this is so pearlescent that oh my gosh, it's gonna look awesome. So that'll be the next one coming out. But I'm gonna put a little of this in here today too. And show you how we do it. Hi, Nanette. Welcome. Like I said, feel free to share um, my video to uh, any other friends that feel you feel might enjoy the video and seeing cups made. And if there's groups you're allowed to post uh, lives into, feel free to share in there. I'm open to finding more people. And if you're not a member of um, our group yet, feel free to go and join that as well. It is, um, I should have put the link in there, but I did not. Um, if somebody wants to type it in there for me, I'd appreciate it. I know the dragons would be awesome, Sarah, they really would. That was the one cup, honestly, I was surprised did not sell in my show this last Saturday. Um, I tell you what, I probably had over 100 people pick it up and, and fondle it. 
<laughs> this one lady made zero sense to me. She, she came over and she carried it around with her in the booth. I mean, she wasn't going to set it down. And I was like, okay, yep, that's old. And she was talking with her friend and she says, oh my gosh, I have that Game of Thrones party that she's doing. And I just laughed and I said, then you have the right cup. And she started cracking up and she goes, well, then she set it down. She said, okay, well, I'm going to come back. Um, because you know, it's like either the first booth or whatever she said she'd gone to. And I thought, yeah, okay, nobody else is selling cups. I'll see ya. And then she didn't come back for it. I was like, wow, that shocked me. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I've got my resin mixed. All right. And, um, it's a two part resin. Uh, and if you haven't heard the spiel, <laughs> it's Moss resin, M A S and it's a countertop resin and I get it off of Amazon. They come out of um, St. Paul, Minnesota. However, uh, most of you that are in the north know that the winters up there right now are very, very cold and, and not very conducive to moving resin. So you might want to ping them or chat with them first before you order some just to make sure it's safe to ship it to you. All right, so what I'm doing is now I'm going to take that, that glitter secret sauce we just talked about and I'm going to put some into my resin. And um, she says on her bag to make sure you shake it. And I think that's because you want to get those powders in there. Oh, holy cow, this is beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, baby. This, this cup is just so cool. And what I did with my other two cups is I just mixed my own glitter and put in there. But I have to say, because of the size of this glitter and everything, it is, it is really pretty. I'll show you here. Get a close up. Woo, there you are. It's hard to get that color on there. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna put the, this resin mix with the glitter onto the cup. Okay, Sarah, did you check the group and make sure that the um, live got shared in there, please? Okay, I'm just playing here. <laughs> it's like, it reminds me of, um, oh my goodness, it reminds me of those little, uh, like a snow globe, you know, where you're watching the uh, glitter fall back down. Hey, Diane, how are you doing? I'm just making some cups. Kind of a fun way to spend Tuesday night. Why not, right? <clears throat> okay, so remember, I've got those mica powders down on the cup already. I painted on top of, I just put the powder right on top of the painted primed cup, right? So that's why you're seeing some of those colors pop up. This thing just gets better and better and better. Don't forget the bottom of your cup. I have um, care sticker labels I put on the bottom, but this is a low ball. Um, and he, he will uh, have more room around my sticker because I don't make them that big. So you want to make sure you have a nice looking bottom of your cup. Nobody wants to look at an ugly bottom. I know. Okay. Just making sure I get on the top. Now I've taped off the top of this cup because the low balls, and I'll show you it here, have a really pretty silver top. Um, and if anybody wants to buy this cup, it is available. I'm just playing tonight. So the top of the cup, this is actually the cup right here. And I just primed it white. So that pretty silver top, I'm going to keep that, right? So I've just taped that off. And it's a nice low ball. It's got a... Um, my big hand. It's got a slider lid to it, so that's pretty cool. 
and the lids screw on so they don't just pop off they screw on which is really cool all right so you can see the color is kind of in there now but hey this gets even better so now i'm going to take my glove back off get rid of the mess so i don't get it all over <clears throat> Trish key. there we go all right now comes some fun need another stick there we go Okay, so now I'm going to take the mica powders that I just had brushed on the cup, the same colors. All right. And I'm just going to blow them onto the cup. That's why I put a plastic bag over my computer. <laughs> this really gets everywhere. Now, mica powder is um, used in uh, makeups, making soaps. So it's fairly safe, non-toxic. But it's a powder, so be careful about the inhaling and where you get it from. It's kind of like glitter. It goes everywhere. So I just start with the first color and I move my way around the cup. No particular order. <clears throat> Don't forget about the bottom. A little bit on the top there. What we're going to do is get these colors on here, and then um, we're going to use heat, okay, and let it spin around. I thought I'd try it with a white base this time, so I'm kind of liking that. stop for a sec see if anybody has any questions oh good thank you sir feel free to share the video out to some friends that you think might be interested in seeing it all right now we're going to try a little bit of that powder i just got for the dragon cup but i, I can't wait to see it so i thought it'd be a good cup to try it on This stuff was a little bit more expensive than the other stuff I buy. But you need so little of it. That probably would show up better on a dark base. But we'll see. Okay, that's looking pretty cool there. A little bit more green, maybe. Okay. Now we're going to apply some heat to it. And this is where the magic starts to happen. Okay, you want to get the resin just to the point where everything starts to move, which it's getting there now. And um, then you'll start moving that powder that you blew on around in different kind of streaks and stuff, and it looks really cool. A little bit on top here. Yeah, that's looking really neat. It's kind of like the, the glitter flow technique, except we're using resin powders, or uh, mica powders and resin.
Okay, about the time it starts to drip, you're done. And what you can do too is flip it the other way. That's cool. Okay, let me bring in for a close up. Ready for a flyby. It's a very, in, on the white background, it's a very dainty, pretty level of colors. I really like that. And if you wanted to, you could still add more mica powder on top of that. But the glitter gives it just enough sheen. Okay. So I think I'm going to put just a touch of color on the top of the cup. This dust just gets everywhere. And this white mica powder has a lot of the green to it, so that's what you're seeing there too. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's looking really neat. Silly things chattering. Let me grab a weight so it'll stop the chatter here. Whoop. Just drop the gun down. Oh, there we go. Okay, be right back. Found a good use for these hand weights. <laughs> There we go. All right. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, a decal, I'd have to find the right one, right? Yeah, it's real pretty. I mean, it, it, let me get you up close here so you can see the color a little better. Let's see if you can see the color here. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Oh, Kim, you're going to love them. They're very addictive. I, they should come with a label. I do. I like that soft look. I do. Um, I kind of do, I would say a half, if not, maybe a quarter to a half of my cups. I try to have a little balance of that softness to them. And they went pretty quick, I have to say. But it's funny, the ones I really thought I wouldn't keep more than the first part of the show um, did or didn't sell but later than I thought they would. So it was, you can't figure it out. I mean, what was really popular in one didn't end up being very popular in the other, that kind of thing. Yeah, watercolor for sure. And, um, but what? So I have to figure that. That's half the trick, right? Figuring out the design. I ended up, okay, so I took your advice on my blue jean cup. 
And um, although he's pretty by himself, right, the zipper blue jean, I think he's very pretty by himself. This is a little 20 ounce Arctic cup that I did. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put this on the back. He's a combination of our American flag and, of course, the race flag for Daytona. So I think that'll be a pretty one on the back of it. So it'll be like his patch on the jacket. And then this was really a cool one. So you guys remember I did the alcohol ink um, the other night in the live. So I put these decals on those. I've got this one on that side. And I love that one. I haven't found a use for it yet. So he finally found a home. So I think that really made those cups. Yeah, do it, <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Welcome. Which one, the blue jean, Kim? You like that one plain? I think that's where mom is, too. She doesn't really feel I needed anything, and if I put anything on, it would have that. Um, so I've been kind of tossing it around. I left him playing at the show, and this got so much attention, but I have to say it's funny. People were like, well, why have a zipper on it? <laughs> I said, well, why not? It's just a fun decoration to fool you into thinking it's something else. And they were like, oh, okay, I get it. Thank you, Michelle. So did everybody see have a chance to see my video I did earlier of the Hydro Dip? I have to say, I really love how this came out. So this was the 50 ounce wine carafe. And it there's the glitter, so you can see the glitter picking through. And I did a hydro glip of, gl um, dip of the colors today with the paint. So he really came out cool. That really made the made the carafe. That's what he needed. I I had all these decals and I was take putting them on, and then the next day I'd take them off. I just didn't like the way it looked. It wasn't. It's not like the decals were taking all the attention, and it just didn't cinch together. Well, of course, you know, I was telling my daughter before I came on, I said, of course, I didn't realize the angle of the camera. And so I had my wonderful legs right in there in that shot. But I didn't want to not put the video out because it was a good video to show for the Hydro Dip. And that was the biggest Hydro Dip I've ever done. 50 ounces. That's a huge beast. He holds two bottles of wine. So I love the cup. I don't think I'm going to do anything more to this right now tonight. Um, we'll let him spin and dry. And he'll probably go about four hours. Um, you want it basically to the point where he's not going to drip anymore, right? So it might still be tacky, but as long as you don't see or feel that, that it's going to start dripping, um, then you're safe to A, take the tape off on the edge that I have, and B, let it stop spinning. And it can just finish drying at night. So that's what I'll do with this cup. All right. Now... Um, for those that also saw one of my lives, I told you I got an air compressor for um, an air gun. And so <laughs> I've been playing with that. <clears throat> so anybody that doesn't want to get addicted, I advise you now, <laughs> turn away. Because <laughs> it is a fun one. All right, let me switch these out. There we go. I'm going to let him spin away over there. All right, so I've been playing with this one and um, using the air gun. And I thought I would show you how I do it. So here, let me get you a little closer and you can see the colors. So I've got blues and teal, aqua, and there's that peach Bellini again. And what happens is as you add alcohol, right, you can start creating, I think, what looks like flowers. And you start working with it. And then what I want to do now is play with a little blending solution and see if I can't soften this up a little bit um, and not lose the colors a whole lot. So let me switch out here. I'm going to get my alcohol inks over there. All right, so I've just got a blending solution. This is um, what you can use for Copic for their alcohol ink pens. And I just had it left over for my scrapbooking days. And what I need to do is wipe up all that powder because it's going to get all over. I don't want it on this cup. Off. All right, so while I'm getting things ready, anybody have questions? Good time to ask because my hands are free and I can type or talk.
Yeah. We have a small group tonight for this live. I'm thinking I would wanted to bring it into my uh, <clears throat> business page so we can start getting people that are not necessarily just a member of our group seeing it. Start helping others join us. Spread the love. I tell you, you should see my computer. Even with a plastic bag laying on top of it, it is coated in mica powder. <laughs> so I'll have to uh, get him all fixed up later. Okay. All right. Let him come up to pressure. Is that too loud? Can you hear me okay still over it? How we doing? And I need a cup. I'm just going to put some of this into a cup so I can kind of dab it on there as I need it. Okay, good. No, it's really not that loud, um, but I didn't know how it would come across on the live. Um, of course, my dad thinks it's way too loud, as y'all heard, but <laughs> that would be men. They think it's always too loud if it's not them making the noise, right? <laughs> so here's the gun. Um, you can put inks and things in there, you know, that's for your air to blow it out and the little needle is inside, but I'm just using the air for this net for this method. Yep. Okay, that scared me. <laughs> I'm still learning it. Um, so I just wanted to kind of get into the practice and start playing with it a little bit here. All right, I'm going to open up my inks, so I have those ready to go. Now, I'm using um, two kinds of inks tonight. Good, I'm glad it's not too loud. Um, I'm using the uh, our regular Tim Holtz. Love, love, love his products and stuff. He never fails with color. And I am started using these iZig, or these, yeah, Zig, Z-I-G. And they're on markersupply.com focus um, and there's so many choices of colors you can buy them in a set and you can buy them individually um, and they have trans transparent um, kind of colors and they have more of the uh, colors you're you're you know familiar with like Tim Holtz has the solid opaque ones so it gives you a lot of choices they have a beautiful one that I used for the smoky in my fire cup it was perfect it's a pale uh, gray All right, so what I'm going to try, and this is all experimental for me because I'm still learning this thing. So what I'm going to try to do is bring in a little bit of my blending solution and put it in some of these spots that I feel, oh, oh I just spilled it, good job, that I feel is um, a little too, too muddy, and then blow it. But this is kind of where I have to figure out hands. I'm not quite comfortable holding everything yet. I don't want to kink my hose. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I spilled so much it's not in the cup anymore. All right, here we go. So let me turn them a little so you can see what I'm doing here. I know anyway, it's kind of hard because it'll run off the cup. But you can see it makes that alcohol ink move again. So I'm trying to get in those areas that I feel like it just muddied up right there. There we go. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing there. And you can also do it with other alcohol inks as you add more color, but I just wanted to catch that real quick, a couple of spots. 
All right, so let me get some ink on there. Now I'm going to add this one. I've been using my peach bellini, and now I want to add um, a little bit of this one, which is the salmon. I'm not quite sure how far up the cup I want to leave the stringers, but right now I'm not worried about it. I can come back with some alcohol wipes and wipe them off. Just trying to get the bottom to look a little bit more like uh, flowers. Right now it kind of looks like seaweed. <laughs> Whoa, hello. That one got a little heavy. It's hard on a round cup, right? You're trying to control this ink. You wouldn't, you'd be, you'd be laughing because it took me a little bit today to realize, oh, my hand moves. I can move my hand with the airbrush. Yeah, getting the hang of it there. Bring in a little peach. That's it. I tell you, that peach Bellini just does not lose itself, and I just love this color. I have to buy another bottle. All right, how cool is that? Like I said, it is very addictive. It's like coloring. So anybody used to love coloring. Hey, Pixie Joy, look at that. I'm so proud of her. Is Diane still on? Mom, Diane Mullins joined earlier. Yeah, it does look like underwater ocean, for sure. And I think it's probably going to end up being that, Linda. <laughs> yeah, at least I get better at the alcohol ink thing. I think what I like about alcohol inks also is that you um, can make them darker, lighter. You know, you just add more to it. And if you don't like it at all, you just come back and wipe it off. Let's see if I can just get it's wanting to run down the nipple, down the bottle. That's not working. Okay. What have I got here? It's a little lighter. Okay, that was kind of cool. Let that sit for a second. All right, I kind of did that. Looks like kind of a little lettuce thingy under the water.
I think the hardest part um, that I'm going to have to learn is when to quit with alcohol links. Because I keep feeling like, well, I can lighten it. I can do this. I can do that. And um, then I've gotten in it again. I don't know. <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit the fun I'm having with this, trying to figure out how to work it and what designs I can play with. Yeah, I'm glad you can't hear it out there. That'll make Dad happy. You like that, sir? Yeah, and like I said, I think I can come back and just wipe off all those little stringers. Um, and maybe, maybe do a, uh, ooh, you know, if I did resin over the top and maybe a little tint of one of the lighter colors in the resin, that'd be like really cool, wouldn't it? So if you're going to resin your alcohol, remember you need to um, seal it first so the alcohol doesn't get uh, moved around with the resin. You look like a green. I tell you, I wish I knew what caps went to what now. It kind of looks, I think I've cross-contaminated these all anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Are you hinting you want another cup? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> She's my fan. I just love her. <laughs> what are you? That one. I, uh, I've said it before. I wish, I wish Tim Holtz would take his caps and at least note them somehow that we know what colors they came with. Like a dot, dot of color or something on the top. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I said something earlier. I know somebody was asking about um, these tissue paper water slides. Um, who wants to know a little bit more about that? I'll tell you what I've learned. stuff out of the way so I don't ruin it. Yeah, fish would look really cool. I have a lot of fish printed. I did um, a big piece of artwork in a coffee table and I used a bunch of my uh, printed um, fish on transparent and white and stuff so definitely have a lot left over. That would look cool. Okay, Michelle, yeah. So Okay, so when we talk about water slides, um, most people, let me grab an example one here real quick. All right, here we go. Just did this one today. Um, most people remember, you know, look at this, right? This is a water slide paper. And what it is um, primarily is exactly that, that the paper, yeah, aren't the images cool? That the paper will um, slide off of its base when you get it wet and then it'll slide right onto your cup so that's how I did uh, these guys okay these are water slide images okay so with this particular paper um, and many of the others I think they're about the same what I found that works really good for me is I get my water tepid you know just a little bit warm and I put them in there for a couple of seconds. I start it face down, flip it back over to the back, and just a few seconds. It doesn't need a lot of time. The, when you know you're ready is you can start peeling away the edge, the outer edge, 
um, the outline. And once it peels away like that, it usually comes right off really easy and you throw it away. And then, then it'll start sliding and it'll slide right off the base of the paper backing and onto your cup. And then you just smooth it out. You use your hand, you make sure your hand is wet and you smooth it out because otherwise it'll tear. It's pretty thin. That's why people like the water slides um, because it is thin. It's thinner than the printable vinyl. And I have that too. I use those too. But it's just a, a matter of choice, um, preference. So it also depends how many layers on your cup you're already willing to do or needing to do as to which one you want to do, right? So um, what I've done and what's worked for me is, is you print out your water slides and you spray it with a clear sealant uh, spray. So I use Rust-Oleum Clear and I do... Um, this brand of water pa slide paper I got off of Amazon in particular, and there, I use another one from um, our, our sister group, which is the Imagine Dream Create, um, and she sells water slide, and that one needs more coats than this one. So it's just a matter of paying attention to the brand and making sure that you get them coated well enough. If you don't seal them with that clear spray and you put them in the water and then you start to slide them, you'll notice the ink starts to come off and you faded your image which may or may not work, just depends on the image. Um, and I've ruined a few images that way. Plus I also just sometimes forget that I didn't seal it. So I've gotten myself into a routine. I print them, I seal them, and I cut them on my die cutter, my uh, Cricut. So um, if you have a, this is white, if you have a clear water slide paper, you don't necessarily have to run it through your Cricut. You can just cut a circle because your clear isn't going to show. So it doesn't matter the edges of that of that cutout. Thank you. Is it Nyla? Nyla. Let me know if I mispronounce it, please. Okay, <clears throat> so the tissue paper. This this is pretty cool. I have to say I had a little bit of experimenting. I have two printers in the house. Um, they're both inkjet, and the newer one has a weird paper feed. So I had a very difficult time getting it to work in that one because when you take your tissue paper, which is just uh, dollar store tissue paper. There's nothing nothing special about it. Okay, just get a pack of your tissue paper That's all it is and this one is all wrinkled. So if you want to um, smooth it out Just take a iron real quick, you know <laughs> to smooth it. Don't leave it on there. It'll catch fire um, Okay, so it's just tissue paper and I cut it uh, that so that it'll fit on to the paper and then I taped it so you can see you know, I taped it down there all around the edges so that it would hold, okay? Now you have to know your printer. You have to be able to pay attention to how you feed your printer paper in. So you want to make sure that you feed it so that it's going to feed up on the tissue paper and print, right? Not, not that way. So it just depends on your printer. Pay attention to um, usually your, your drawers that you put your paper in show you the direction that your paper should go and which top or bottom, all right? So pay attention to that. But make sure that wherever the head of the paper is that the first feeder is going to grab, that you have that tape pretty well. Just tape that seal down because if it, if it has little gaps, these tend to get caught. And you can see it kind of got caught a little, and that's why I got that extra ink. All right. Otherwise, look how well that printed. That's tissue. I haven't pulled it off of the backing yet, but that's tissue paper. Now, you don't use water, right? Water is going to dissolve your tissue paper. <laughs> it's going to go gone. So I could play a magic trick and say, ah, there you go. Um, so what you do is with the tissue paper water slides, you just take those off, you cut them out. Uh, you probably could run it through, as a matter of fact, they claim you can run it through your Cricut or your Silhouette. The Cricut I know has a tissue paper setting um, or washi tape setting. I haven't tried it. Um, I didn't, I didn't really worry too much on my experiment here to do it, but uh, I suppose you could do the same thing on your Cricut. All right. And again, just leave it taped down and make sure that it stays that way because these are the cut, cut lines that it would use. Okay. Um, all right. So once you get it cut out, then you just use Mod Podge. That's it. You put it on your cup where you want it and you take your Mod Podge and you just cover that image up. And then when the Mod Podge is all dry, you're ready to resin. Rock and roll. I love, 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 love that image. <laughs> so if anybody is uh, a member in the image, Imagine Dream Create VIP group, go into the um, photos and the albums, and you'll find all of these images in there. Well, 
that one. She has a ton of images in there. I made the lips. Um, I took those and did the stars and the lips and they cute. <laughs> I had made a t-shirt out of that a while back. Um, and I was thinking I'd put that on the blue jean cup, you know, but I don't know. I'm like you, I'm Linda. I'm kind of torn. How did it recognize? Oh, the lines cricket. Well, so when you do a print and cut on Cricut, um, it, it says, okay, um, I'm going to print it onto your printer. You send it to your printer. There's a button there and you send it over to your printer. And after it prints, because it has these images and it's aligned to basically be on your mat, um, it sees it that way. And so it puts these little lines here that you see on the square. And then the Cricut has a, a light flashlight on it and it senses where these cut lines are. So it'll go through its process and it'll say, okay, I see this one. Okay, I see this one. Okay, I see this one. And then what it's doing is sensing where the images are because if it figures out where these four square lines are, then it knows exactly where the placement of the images are. That's the digital information that it sent to it. And, it'll, and in this case, um, it would cut the square just along the lines because I didn't take any color out. Um, the flag, it would cut right along the edge of the flag and the lips, it would cut out all the white that's inside. That's why I wouldn't have that cut because I had this set up for a t-shirt. So yeah, and other, other than that, the first part of that is you just import your pictures into the Cricut, right? You upload them. So wherever you've stored them on your computer, you upload and you t go over to that file and you click on it and it brings it in and you can clean it up, um, take out some background, whatever you're doing, and um, then bring that into your mat on Cricut. And Silhouette kind of is the same process. It just has to bring it in and, and it converts them into their cut files is what they're doing. So um, what I'll do is I'll follow up with a picture of um, uh, something I use one of these images on and show you how it comes out. But I love the fact that it came out so vivid. I mean, I'm very happy with it. And you don't have to spray it. You know, you're using Mod Podge over it. So that's one less step I have to remember to do. So certain things I can see this working really well with, especially this image, because it's just four straight lines. I didn't have to worry about any fine detail um, being cut out or anything. So um, just something to consider. The lips, what I thought I would do if I was going to use it is I would just fussy cut around, you know, the outside edge and I would leave some of the white and leave the white inside and just kind of use that on the background of my cup and see how that came out. So something to play with. Techie techie. <laughs> I think I lost Sarah. <laughs> it's the die cutter machine, baby, that I use to cut. That's my daughter. She's supposed to be the techie techie at her age. But in this family, everybody comes to me for their help on the technology. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I'm going to start doing my lives on this page and hopefully we can grow um, our membership in our group. Um, for one, I'd love to see by the end of this year that we've hit a thousand. That would be phenomenal. And we'll do, um, maybe we'll do another giveaway at 500 and then we'll do a giveaway at a thousand when we get memberships there. So reach out to your friends, send this out to people you think would be interested. Um, and then if you're on my page to, to watch this video, please like and share. Uh, that'll help me grow my page as well. Yeah, computers, not crickets. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I've had my cricket forever. I think I had one of the first crickets that came out, and I've just been upgrading. So now I've got the cricket maker. Don't know where I'd be without those. And I do have a silhouette, so I promised myself this year I am learning my silhouette. Um, I haven't really used it for too much. Uh, it's too expensive to use it for what I have, so I need to start really learning the tool and, and getting into it because I, I know I'd like it. It's just a matter of learning its software. All right. Does anybody have any suggestions you want me to do another live on next time? If you can't think of them now, definitely um, post them in our group or message me because I'm always willing to accommodate what I can help teach you. And I'll show pictures of the final products um, tomorrow when they've dried. But that is really pretty. I'm liking that one.
And again, it's going to look very, very different on a black background. So I might do the same technique on the same size cup. I'll just paint the base black and we'll see how that turns out. And yeah, I think this, I think we're going to go with the undersea. You need a second. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> I'm getting harassed by my daughter. Okay, well, um, if you think of it later, uh, let's see. Susan, have you done one of the crackle look cups? Oh, yeah, and um, that came out so cute. I can show you how to do the crackle cup. Yep. Now, what I'll tell you is before we do that uh, live, if you want to do it along with me, I think I have it. Uh, let me grab my crackle. You need a crackle glaze. Yeah. And um, this one by Folk Art is really good. I had some crackle glazes in the past that didn't really do the crackle as much, but this one I'm real pleased with. So um, if you want to do a live and we can do it together, that's great. Just get your products. So what you need to do is have your cup painted on the prime, you know, have, have whatever color you want on the prime. And then you're going to paint um, this on and let it dry and we'll use a hair dryer. You could speed up the drying and then you're going to put another paint color on top of that and dry that and then it starts to crackle. So yeah, we can do that. I did an aqua with a navy blue underneath it. It was really pretty and I put a, um, a really neat ship's anchor under sea ship's anchor with all the seaweed and stuff around it. Um, it was pretty. Fish eyes and air bubble issues with your aluminite lately. It's frustrating. Um, okay, so what's changed in your environment? Anything, Lisa? Uh, Susan, you can get this on Amazon. Or uh, Michaels probably carries it. They carry a lot of folk art. Um, maybe Hobby Lobby. I I got mine on Amazon, but I'm sure the, the local stores probably carry it as well. Um, Lisa, sometimes if you're, um, if you're, uh, well, you can get fish eyes also when you're not using enough resin. When you're stretching your resin too thin, um, it, it is, it is kind of like one of those, um, leather fruits, you know, I can think of to explain. So as you're pulling that leather fruit, fruit off the, the paper, right, and you want to split it in half, you see how thin it gets and it starts to get almost transparent and then finally it breaks right? The resin is very similar. It wants to self-level. And if it's too thin and it can't stay together, it's just going to fish eye out, right? I'll let you know the crackle cup. It, it'll probably be on the next um, live or so, but uh, I think what I'm going to try to do, it's kind of one of my New Year's resolutions, is I think what I'd like to do is just schedule a live and say maybe we do a, a consistent live once a week. And we'll pick a good night that, that works for everybody in a time. And um, then if we do any impromptu lives, you know, that'll be something in between. But at least then we have a consistent one. So maybe that would work better for everybody. Um, so I'll put that out there. Yeah, and the cold weather plays too. Um, so if it isn't that you're putting too thin of a layer, uh, then I would say, yeah, that was my other thought was your environment. And it could be that it's too cold. Um, you can try, I know a lot of people are heating their resin before they use it. I, I caution you and say, um, I don't know the rules around the Illuminite specifically company, uh, but they always send a fact sheet with their resin. Whoever you buy your resin from, I'll show you mine. I think I have it right here. I thought I had it right here. Let's see. Set up to pull that one out real quick. I just cleaned up again, so I don't know where I set it. But um, all the resin, when you get your resin um, in the box with the resin, you'll have a sheet, right? And it should tell you all the facts around your resin, meaning how do you how do you mix it one to one? If you're going to weigh it, you need to know what that ratio of weight should be. And I say that too because a lot of people weigh their ratio or their their resin. They think that it's going to be a 50-50 on the on the scale, and it's not. If you have looked at your resin, right? Your part A and your part B. Um, one of these is clearly heavier than the other. It's thicker. It's thicker than the other. The other one's thinner. So they're not going to weigh the same. So your resin company will tell you if you're going to weigh it, 
to get a one to one, they'll tell you the, the ratio. And that's why I don't weigh mine because it's something weird. It's like 80 over something fraction to a one. <laughs> and Jean wasn't that good in math, so I don't do that. Um, so I weigh mine out, or I measure mine out by ounce or milliliters or something. So that could be one problem is, is the, the ratios aren't right. Um, it could also be that it's too cold. So again, when you heat it, the fact sheet will tell you how to properly heat your resin. Um, and it's usually just the one part, not both. Uh, they'll also tell you or caution you not to heat it and then put it in a large quantity um, because then your, your chemical reaction is going to be too severe. It's going to be too hot because it heats up when it, chem when it chemically reacts together, right? Yeah, so just check with your Illuminolite fact sheet or go onto the Illuminite site and see, look into their FAQs, their facts, and see if people are complaining about fish eyes with their product. And they sometimes will have some solutions for you to check. But those are just the ones I can think of sometimes that occur. I've had that happen on occasion. Another reason that it used to happen to me on my paintings more than on my cups is because um, sometimes I would use resin over my flow art painting and in the flow art mix, I would use silicone or something like that to create some cells. And of course, silicone resists resin. So those little areas that the silicone still existed, the resin pulled away and created a fish eye. But that typically isn't what you're running into on a cup. Good question, though. I hope that helped. Also, um, what's the temperature in the room as you're curing, as you're leaving, you know, as you have it on the cup spinner and you're leaving it? Are you keeping your room around 70? Because that definitely will make a difference in the cure. It'll make a difference in the cure and it'll make a difference in how long it takes to cure. So if your resin company says, hey, you know, you should be able to handle it in four hours and you're finding that it's still very fluid after four hours, um, it could be that it's too cold. It just takes longer for it to cure them. Yeah, and let me know if you can't find it. I'll help you look for it. They, I'm sure they have one online, um, and I'm sure they also have an FAQ site that might help answer that question for you. But my guess would be temperature. Okay, so your room's 70, so that's good. Um, do you use anything to heat it up with uh, for a heat gun? Do you use a heat gun or a torch when you have it on the cup to get the bubbles out? Usually um, when I'm doing the, the cups, I'll put, like you saw me heat that one up to the point that it was pretty fluid and it had a couple of dropping off. Um, that, that also is something you can do to get it to the point where it's heated nice. You got the bubbles out. Don't catch it smoky or get it on fire or anything, but um, heat it up real nice and smooth and then, and then just leave it. It will um, self-level and it'll be real pretty like, like, like a piece of glass when it's done. You use the heat gun once it's on the tumbler. Okay, the first. Okay, and then how do you how do you use it? You just kind of run it over a couple of times, or do you get it to the point where you know you've heated it pretty nice and consistent, and you can start to see it moving, and then you stop? Because that's about the time you that's how long you want to do it. Yeah, these colder environments, it's so hard to work with resin. It really is. But if your room's 70 and you're keeping your resin in there with you, um, it should be okay to use that way. It might want it a little warmer. But again, that fact sheet will tell you what Illuminolite likes. Yeah, you definitely want to, you know, the heat gun will help get your resin heat it up to the point that it's going to start, you know, you saw it on my cup here and, and you want it to start kind of moving, right? You want to see that resin moving around the cup almost to the point you feel like it's going to start dripping off. Okay. Don't get it smoky and don't heat it up too hot that, that it's going to um, singe it. Um, so keep it, keep it a good distance from it, move it around as the cup's spinning, right? And you'll see that resin start to move. It doesn't take very long. 
and you want to make that kind of the, the case just before it starts to get to the runny point you want to stop and and it will um, get all those bubbles out and it'll get that resin moving around and heat up so that it can kind of cure correctly. And that could be, um, Lisa, you know, and, and like I said, it could also be that maybe you need to have that room a little bit warmer, maybe a space heater in the room while you're, while you're getting it to the cure state. Um, it, it might be that, um, I mean, there's so many factors. You're, if your cup isn't uh, room temperature, you know, like if you had it outside, if it was in the garage, you know, those kind of things, and then you got to put resin on, that's, that's changing the temperature of your resin you're putting on it. Um, just things to think about, right? Temperature is a big key with your resin. You're very welcome. Yeah, and like I said, if you can't find the FAQ um, or the, the fact sheet on the Illumilite uh, resin, let me know and I'll help you look for it. Okay, well, thanks for joining everyone. And like I said, give me some suggestions of things you want to see. Right now I've heard crack, uh, crack cup, um, crackle cup. We'll happily do that and uh, anything else you can think of. I'm looking for some new creative ways to do these cups. So if you guys want to join in on some suggestions of things we can try and start experimenting, I think that'd be fun. Well, Lisa, you know, sometimes you can just use a torch, you know, and get the bubbles out and that works. I think for the most part, people get kind of lucky. It just, it's a very temperature driven product. Um, it likes to be in those seventies. Most of them like to be in the in the mid 70s, you know, 72, 75, somewhere in there. Um, and I just have found even Florida has been colder, and my uh, part A is is actually in the bottle down there. It's actually starting to kind of you can see it's starting to crystallize a little bit in there. So I was just kind of heating this up today in the sink. I put some hot water and I just set the bottle in there and kind of mixed it around. If you heat these guys up, that crystallization will stop and it'll it'll get back to a liquid state. But they even here in the Florida house, I mean, we have our, our heat on at night and stuff, but you know, it probably in, in this area is getting a little cooler than than they like. Yeah, you're very welcome. All right, so just let me know uh, any other suggestions. And like I said, creativity is the key. We wanna come up with some new ideas, things that other people aren't doing so much of and we'll be the next ones that they talk about, right? <laughs> How did you do that cup? So um, share some of your things. I wanna see what you're doing. And uh, if you have any questions, share a picture of the, the issue and, and maybe I can help, okay? All right, thanks for joining everyone. Have a great night.